Hello, I'm Stacy with Stacy's Organizing and Decorating for Life. Four fingers. I am here to help you organize your thoughts and decorate your perspectives. So today our topic is going to be about relationships, building a boyfriend, building a girlfriend, building a partner. So if you like that that's our topic today, please hit the like and subscribe button below. I also encourage you to look at the disclaimer box below to see what I am and what I am not. I'm a life coach, and if you'd like to reach out to me for services, I'd you know, I'd be happy to assist you and help you in your path. It's all the information's down in there. So let's get started on the topic today. So we're going to look at relationships. You know, the topic build a boyfriend came up because I've been talking to my girlfriends. I'm not dating. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm healing, you know. And nobody, or like a lot of people, don't go into things, you know, saying, I want to be healed, you know. I've been on a healing path for a long time, though. And, you know, it's life on life's terms really is what it is. Because there's always going to be hurt and pain. There's always going to be love and, and things to gain, too. So no one just gets to go through one. But why we think we do, I don't understand. That's just our humanness, you know. And, and it's oftentimes that we try to hide that other stuff. So that's what the topic is about today. We're going to talk about creating relationships like to build a boyfriend in Texas and, and, you know, places all over America and I'm sure other places too, is that we've got this thing we take our kids, build, build a bear. You know, you get to put the stuffing in, you get to pick their clothes out, you get to put a heart in. I'm sure a lot of people would agree that that would be an awesome way to be able to build your relationships. And in a kind of a way, we do. There is our will and somebody else's will. But I'm going to talk to you about you know, scientific stuff and, and also with soul stuff because there's a need for that nowadays. So obviously me coming to you is a scientific way of coming to you, but there's also the soul and they're starting to realize more and more with the science and the soul that this all works congruently together. So I like you watching my video. I like to watch videos too and learn what I can from videos. And I'm hoping that I'm able to break it down into a shorter version for you because some of these videos I watch last an hour. So first off, we're going to talk about what are we building. You know, a lot of us build default relationships. They're just default. We're not, you know, and so we're going to talk about what is a default relationship. What am I talking about when I talk about default relationships? So what I mean when I talk about default relationships, these are unconscious. They come from the lower energy, and they're also from need. Although none of us want to say we're needy, but when we think about it, what is that need? And in a way relationships I, I don't know that they, if they start that way or not I don't like somebody to come with me come at me with need so really when we get older it's unfortunate that most of us I know for me now some young people are very smart and they don't do this but from with older and the way things have evolved they've gotten a lot more conscious belief systems we just used to do things because that's what our parents did and their parents did and so on and so forth but in this consciousness we get creative and we get thoughtful and this is more out of want so finding a harmony between need and want you know because want oftentimes leads to people to have entitlement and need leads to you know it's like more of a codependency type thing so we don't want to create, I don't want to create codependent relationships, but I certainly have in the past, and I've done a lot of work on codependency. You know, and, and a lot of that started when we do this work, build a boyfriend, build a girlfriend. When we're talking about healing, we go back to the past. That's why a lot of people don't like to do that. But how do you think you're going to create or manifest in this electromagnetic frequency if you haven't done this healing work and become conscious of what it is you're running from? Because it kind of goes hand in hand in whatever we're given more energy to. Even though we may not think we're running from stuff, and at first we may not be. We run into stuff, but it, later we're running from stuff, you know. So what are we running from? What are we running to? What do we, th we think we want? What is it that we need? And that's all that's supplied within us in our self, selves, and souls. So... When we do the healing work, we look back. You know, we look back at our parents. For instance, my parents were 18 and 20 when I was born. 16 and 18 when they got married. Can I cannot imagine trying to raise kids myself at 18 and 20 years old, starting to bring these people into the world. But see, that's what they were taught. And even I got married at 19 to my first ex-husband. And that was definitely in default mode because I was using drugs 
and partying and all of this. And I just thought I was supposed to get married. And really, it was kind of out of spite because of that first boyfriend, you know. And, and if he didn't want me, then somebody else would. And so I just bounced in relationships at that time in my life. You know, but as maturities come on and recoveries come on, I became more conscious of my decisions. I don't drink and party anymore, and I'm not saying that that's wrong, because some people can certainly do it and be cool with it, but my addictive tendencies are not cool with it. So I'm just speaking on my own person, because I admire if you can do that, then, you know, I have a best friend that she can do that. One of my best friends. So anyway... Please know that this isn't a judgment on that. I'm just saying for me, I was unconscious. I was coming from a place of need because I wanted somebody outside of me to be stronger and meaner than my dad because I had a volatile relationship with my dad. So it was much out of spite of, you know, when I look back at it, I was trying to spite my dad. I was trying to spite my ex-boyfriend. So this is why we have to do this tracking. When I look back at this and I do the healing work, it was that I was my own self lacking. You know, when maybe I could blame my dad or whatever, but that only, that story gets old after a time. At least for me, it does. I'm not going to keep blaming that because my dad did the best he could. And really, he did teach me a lot of things. Maybe not the way he wanted to teach me, but I got the message and it has made my life better and more fruitful today because I got to learn the lessons, you know. And that's what life is, is just a series of lessons and blessings, you know. And so... It's those polarities, though. So let's talk about this electromagnetic universe and what we attract. And see, that's what I'm saying when we build a boyfriend. This is our thoughts and our feelings play a part in us building a partner, whether it be a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. So this is what I, I watched today. Watch not today, but on a Joe Dispenza. And we also, I watched something today talking about neuroplasticity because sometimes I'm describing things myself that I don't know the scientific terms for. But oftentimes I'm talking about neuroplasticity and I was listening to Dr. Tara Bieber on Lewis House, is that how you say his name, today. And um, she was talking about the neuroplasticity and she was a scientist, but she talked about building an action board. Not a dream board, but an action board because we can have dreams, but if we don't put the action forward, the dreams are just set there on that board maybe. Sometimes they come true, but we need to be reminded of what we're creating See, that's creation in itself. I'm not saying that I have an action board myself. So anyway, before this video, I watched one on self-regulation. Dr. Joe Dispenza talking about self-regulation. And y'all have heard me talk about regulation before because the book with Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Oh, I forgot. Anyway, that book. <sighs> yep. So thoughts. Thoughts produce an electrical charge into the quantum field. We all can't, we all, there's no denying that we live in a negative and positive energy field that, you know, we attract, there's magnets that attract, you know, when we can accept responsibility for what we attract, that's huge. So thoughts produce electrical charges in the quantum field, and then feelings produce a magnetic charge in this quantum field. So, get this, how we think and how we feel broadcast an electromagnetic frequency. None of us know how the radio works. None of us know, you know, I mean, technically, we don't know how these things work, but we know there's an energy involved in it. In the work that I do, in the Reiki and energy healing work, what I do is I try to regulate people, help them get regulated once again, because all of these traumas and all these fears that we have, they keep recurring, recurring, recurring again until we heal them. It's crazy to, you know, now that I look back, because I used to not think that I had to do something to change things, but nothing changes till it changes. So this is why I talk about the healing work when we look back, you know, and see where did I pick up these ideas and things if I'm not being treated the way I want to be treated. Where did I pick up these ideas and things? Or why, what is this left for me to learn or heal from this? Because now I know that it's all about healing and learning. That gives me more empowerment when I heal and learn rather than be a victim of those circumstances. But a lot of us do get stuck on that default mode. So once we get you know, conscious about what we want to create, creating from there. So when I look back at those old relationships with those old boyfriends and ex-husbands, you know, is that a lot of that was created from the fear. A lot of it was created from spite. A lot of it was created from pride within myself. 
you know, and what I developed from those was insecurity. What I developed from those was inferiority. What I developed from those was abandonment issues. It's, it's not going to help me grow to blame anybody else. So what those things were for me to do is to create my own paradise was maybe those were hell. So when we're looking at these things, what we consider, you know, the polarities once again, is that for me to turn, the reason that we have our consciousness is for us to turn one polarity to the other polarity and know that, and embrace them both so that we can have harmony. You know, I grew up in chaos because I had these young parents. They didn't know how to be parents, really. You know, my mom, her abandonment issues got passed on to me and my dad's addiction issues got passed on to me. And it doesn't make me a victim. From that chaos, I got to create clarity. You know, and they had things that they had to grow from, too. This isn't their video, though. This is mine. I love you, Mama. So, anyway, um, and she watches, you know, and I, I don't have to hide what I say or do, you know, because that's the thing is we, we learn our own truth. You know, we learn to speak and see and hear our own truths. But until we learn our own truth of our divinity and serenity and into our paradise... Do we keep it hearing these same things over and over, whether that's what's being said or not? We make things up. So if we're going to make things up and build things, once we do this healing work, it gives us the opportunity to make things from the better. So now when I look back at that first boyfriend that I was trying to spite with that first marriage, I can remember how he was a very handsome guy, and he had a lot of confidence. And so it's like, yeah, in my future... I want somebody with a lot of confidence, not false confidence, not arrogance, confidence. I know the difference between all of that now. I didn't always know the difference between all of that. So I want somebody with confidence. What do you want? Did you have a boyfriend or, a, you know, somebody or husband that would give you nice massages? I'm not talking about those three-minute happy ending massages. I'm talking about good, sensual, intimate massages. Do you want to create that in your relationship? Put that on your list. You know, I was once told to make these lists and put it under my pillow. So you put it there, you know, okay, I want somebody who's confident. I want somebody who gives nice, sensual massages. Do you want a, a person who takes you on trips? Do you want a person that can talk to you and listen to you and not argue with you when you have a problem or issue or who can just listen at the time? Do you want a person who holds your hand? This is big too. I mean, it's these little things that it can be big things if they're not thought about in, in, in that creation. You know, then we get into settling when we go into fault mode. See, if we just bounce from relationship to relationship, it's like, okay, well, I done got myself in this and messed this up. So then I've got to deal with this now and, well, it's not as bad as the last one, and we get to making those excuses up. And, you know, we don't need to make those excuses up. It gets tiring, doesn't it? So what do we want to create to get clear on that? You know, it's I've talked before about a lot of times we know what we don't want, but creating what we do want, and oftentimes we forget what we used to have was what we wanted at the time. So what was it that attracted us to that? And I'm not saying to stay in toxic relationships. I'm not saying to stay in abusive relationships or to go back to those damn things. I'm not at all. See, when we have a faith or something, then we can understand that when this one relationship ended and we thought that was the end-all, be-all, that there was another one that came along behind that. And we thought, oh... And then when that one ended, we thought that one was going to kill us. But oftentimes, if we're smart, we grew from each one of these. We grew our trust muscles. A lot of my clients, that we talk about trust muscles. So we learn to know that we're just doing better. That, you know, what is perfection? Perfection is us to be able to step up to what it is that we want to create. See, that's the thing in recovery that we learned is if I want to, be a, if I want to have good friends, I've got to learn how to be a good friend. If I want to have a good partner, I've got to learn to step up and be a good partner. Not to depend on a person to take care of me. Although I've done that. You know, I'm not saying that I haven't. But what happens is that I have to pay the consequences and learn what I need to learn from that when I do. I'm not saying to self-sabotage myself paying consequences. Because a lot of people self-sabotage. The consequences are is looking at the shit that I created once again. Taking responsibility for it rather than being a victim. 
and saying, well, this is what I get to learn from this. And it's just my humanness, life on life's terms. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you and helped you to accept your humanness on life's terms and to know that we are creating. Whether we realize it or not, we can be unconscious or consciously creating. We can be by default or be by, you know, consciousness, by knowing. So let me look at my notes before we leave here today. Remember, the things I want you to take away is that we do live in an electromagnetic universe and that our thoughts send out an energy that our feelings bring back. So we need to step it up, you know, and heal what we think is in lack within ourselves and ourselves and our soul. But nothing outside of us is going to help us grow. It's inside. It's an inside job. And so, you know, we looked at default and, and unconscious, you know, relationships versus creative and conscious relationships of, so, you know, being responsible. One's irresponsible, the other is responsible. And some, it works for us for a while, but then not later. And some people just swear off relationships. But relationships are an integral part of life. The relationship with ourself is most important. To learn to love ourself because we can't give from an empty cup. You know, and maybe we are going to love. And maybe we will break up. But what can I learn from that? You know, and it's not to say love everybody that comes in your way. Because when you love yourself, you don't settle. When we love ourselves, we remember from what we created on our list that we don't want to negate from that and just settle. You know, if we don't want somebody who drinks, then we're not going to accept somebody who drinks. And, you know, even if we, we, we may rationalize and justify, there's this thing, rationalization and justification, and we may, oh, well, they just drink a little. Or, well, they do this. We sometimes exchange that. We need to learn to, to have boundaries with ourselves, too you know, and what we think and what we do. So with that being said, I'm going to stop this video and hope that you've learned to create your partner, learn to heal from the past so something will last because I don't even know that it will last, but if we love ourselves in the end, see how many times, to, that's that's a, that's the a kicker there, right? If you can take that away, can I love myself in the end, you know? And I certainly, you know, leaving relationships, I don't have to spy anymore and get somebody else to make things right. You know, I get to work on myself and, and be happy for myself. I mean, I'm not going to say that it doesn't hurt when I'm a relationship's done and I know that they've got someone else or that they've done, you know, this or that. It hurts. But I heal that pain rather than think that somebody else outside of me is going to heal that pain. I have to heal that pain within myself and I still get to have my dignity and my serenity and not realize and realize that I'm not creating from that pain that I'm creating within myself some strength and some esteem. So I hope that this helps you. And now I'm really going to stop. I wish you much peace and love. And I look forward to connecting with you next week. And remember, I thank you so much. However you support this channel, whether you send prayers, whether you subscribe and share, or, you know, you can send money too. Everybody likes sending money, right? I mean, send. everyone likes to receive money. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.